place just in time for next Thursday's El Clasico is Fnatic and SK Gaming. The game behind them in third is H2K, with Gambit rounding out the top four after a seven-game win streak. Toward the bottom of the tables, meet your makers, keep their hope alive as they look to catch Rocket and Giants to avoid automatic relegation. And, well, they did get a win on the board yeah. here. They did, so great for Medium Makers. Next week they're playing Giants. If they win that one, suddenly you have a battle going on here for who's going to avoid the automatic relegation. So great for Medium Makers. Not so good for Unicorns of Love because they're still obviously looking at this top six. They want to get into the playoffs, and yet you have to worry about elements. They are still having some problems, but we have to see what they can do next week because it's going to, I think it's going to be between them and, and Unicorns of who's going to get into playoffs and who's going to set as number seven and obviously avoid relegation but not really go anywhere. Wow. Very uh, interesting uh, observation there. Focusing on today's action, one player carried harder than the rest with 12 kills, 8 assists, and 2 triple kills, racking up over 44 points. Today's fantasy leader is H2K's Yarnan on that jinx, making it happen today. Yeah. Uh, if you have a Yarnan, I guess you're very happy. If you're an H2K fan, you should also be happy because they're playing really well. And him and Kasing together has looked like one of the best dual lanes we had, not just in pure 2-on-2 two two laning, but also just because they're so good at knowing where to be on the map. Like, Yanan is always the guy fast pushing the lanes, taking the towers, and Kasing is the guy roaming around creating kills for the rest of his team. So they look really good together, and just Kasing coming in, becoming his new support has made Yanan also really step up his game. Raymond pulling his weight. Looking at week six <laughs> as a whole, a lot of players stepped up, but there were only five that we have deemed as OP. The first person that we are looking at is a Fnatic player, Yellow Star. He's not been in here for a couple of weeks, but uh, definitely stepping up here once again. 86 kill participation yeah. in this one, and two deaths in two games. I'm playing Al Alistar in both the games. So good at knowing when to go in and zone away from, or zone the enemy team away from his carries, and also just engaging. We also know he's the main shot caller from Fnatic, so whenever they're doing well, playing around the map, it's most likely Yellowstar making the calls. Most Yellowstar making the calls, and someone who listens to those calls is Febevin, the mid laner, of course, for uh, Fnatic as our second OP player. Um, actually, he will come in a bit, because I messed Ryu up. First. I messed up. What a spoiler. Ryu first from H2K. Definitely stepping up. Just as we said yeah. that it might not be his playstyle to carry. What a performance on Cassidy for him. Oh, it looked great on Cassidy. And you can see how everyone else from H2K were just making sure he was the guy getting fed. Lolix ganked for him a few times. And yeah, OK. February is going to come next as the guy. He was the former H2K mid laner. And now, of course, Ryu is the guy playing in there. And Starting to really step it up. We see more and more from Ryu every week. Yeah, and guess who's next as OP? Oh, show? Um, could it be? Could yeah, be? it's Febivin. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Febivin, as I said, also one of the uh, few players to make that double lady work and make that Ezreal in the mid lane work, and he's yeah. just having fun with it. He really used that mid game spike. He talked about Trinity Force Man Immune to his advantage, and Fnatic and Febivin just look so solid every single week when they play together. And for he, he could have been here nearly every week because mm -hmm. he's just so good in this mid lane. We've seen him carry games beforehand, and in this one, same deal. Yep. Next up is someone uh, as well from the H2K lineup. We have to mention Odo Wamne, showing just what a god. diversity on so many champions. What a god you're going to call him. Is it a beautiful man, too? He's also a beautiful man, for <laughs> sure. But now you're just forcing me to say it, and then mean, it doesn't really count. If anyway, the shoe fits. Odo Wamne can play literally every style in that top lane. He can be the tank, he can be the carry. His Maokai today, locking down Ken and everything, and just always setting up kills for his team, was so good. And I think Odo Amne, as some of the coaches said, mm -hmm. definitely a top two top laner in Europe. Top two is our next OP in that top two as well. Cabo Shard, we talked about him beforehand. You highlighted him with his Morgana play. Very impressive and just playing that many champions and making plays for the team. Yeah, Cabo Shard, fantastic laner. And we see Gambit play around it. Always make sure he gets going early on. Because, yeah, in team fights and, of course, in the laning phase, great mechanics. He knows how to carry a game for his team. and. Gambit looks great together with uh, Kabushard. You had to send Oduwamne and Kabushard mid, like, one versus one. And see oh, that would be the, pretty sick. That would be impressive. Well, of our OP5, one player really put on an amazing show, leading their team to the victory over the last two days. Our Week 6 MVP with 32 assists and 84% kill participation and a KDL of 7.6 in two games as Maokai. It is H2K's Oduwamne. We were already singing his praises, absolutely deserving yeah. it. Not on Nardis time, still the same performance. 84% kill participation as a 
a top laner. That is insane. He's part of nearly everything H2K does. He's also one of the players making a lot of calls in the team fights. And when you have that kind of top laner who can play all these different styles, it makes the pick and ban phase so easy for you because you don't have to worry about him being counter picked or being banned out because there's so many champs for him to pick from. Yeah, H2K on their way up as a whole as well. There are only three weeks left before playoffs, so every game matters. We'll be back here in Berlin next Thursday, week seven, as Meet Your Makers face Giants Gaming. The Copenhagen Wolves will go up against Elements and we'll have our last El Clasico of the split between SK Gaming and Fnatic. And with the way the standings are shaping up, this match could tell us a lot about the spring playoffs and it is full EU LCS here. It is full EU LCS. That's hard to say, LCS. Full EU LCS. Everyone is <laughs> beating each other. And also we get to see Oduamna against Kapushat because Unicorns will take on Gambit. Another one where they're fighting for, you know, the top three. Boom, we get our one first. Boom. Maybe. Mark your calendars. That all starts next Thursday at 6 p.m. Central European time. That is 9 a.m. Pacific. Now, meanwhile, the North American LCS will pick up week six tomorrow in Los Angeles where Team Coast will take on Cloud9. Team Solo Mid will go up against Dignitas and the day will end with Counter Logic Gaming versus Winter Fox. Any particular thing you've got your eye on? Oh, I really look forward to Team Liquid against Gravity, two of the teams who obviously know each other really well and have been uh, picking up the pace. Also, Last Shadow, the coach for Gravity, is a good friend of mine, so I want to see what he can do with his team. We will see indeed. That all kicks off tomorrow at 9 p.m. Central European time. That is noon Pacific. That does it for us here in Europe. I would like to give a special thanks to all of the coaches that joined us on the desk this week to buff our analysis. They were all great. And from myself, the Fischio, and the European LCS crew, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you back here next week.